Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video we're going to create a program that can detect if an individual has Parkinson's disease. Now currently I'm on Google's website called colab.research.google.com because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So let's go ahead and get started writing this code. So the first thing that I want to do is click on file and then new notebook. And now in this new tab that's opening, I'm going to put a description about the program in comments. So it's going to put description and I'm going to put a comment about what this program will be doing. So this program detects if an individual has Parkinson's disease. Okay, and for those of you who don't know, Parkinson's disease is a progressive nervous system disorder that affects movement. Symptoms start gradually, sometimes starting with a barely noticeable tremor in just one hand, and tremors are common, but the disorder also commonly causes stiffness or slowing of movement. And that's coming directly from mailclinic.org, and I'll put a link to that in the description below so you guys can all check it out. All right. So now let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And I'm going to get the dependencies that I'm going to be using throughout this program. So I want to import pandas as pd. Next I'm going to import numpy as, as mp. And from xgboost, I'm going to import xgb classifier. Okay, next from sklearn dot preprocessing, I'm going to import min max scalar. Okay, now from sklearn dot metrics, I'm going to import classification underscore report. And from sklearn dot model underscore selection I'm going to import train underscore test underscore split and last but not least I'm going to import seaborn as SNS okay now I'm going to go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button here to the left okay so everything looks good let's create a new cell and let's load the data set so I am on Google's website here, so I need to use their library to do this. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files. And then I'm going to create a variable called upload it and set it equal to files.upload. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and click on choose files. And then I'm going to choose this parkinsons.data file. Perfect. And let's create a new cell. Now that the data set is uploaded, I want to load the data into a data frame. So I'm going to create a data frame called df and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to read that parkinsons.data file. So that looks good. Next, I'm going to print the first five rows of data, so just type df.head just so that I can take a look at the data set. Okay, so now here's a look at the data. We can see all of the columns here. And the column that we're really interested in is this status column, which will have values one or zero. One meaning that that patient or that individual actually has the disease and zero meaning that that individual did not have the disease okay so that's what we're interested in let's go ahead and create a new cell and I want to check this data for missing values so just type df dot is null and then dot values dot any and run this and we're going to get back true or false. So right now, 
I get back false, meaning that there is no data missing from this data set. So that's good. So I don't have to do any type of manipulation to this data, you know, adding values or removing values or removing rows, things like that, or columns, at least not for missing data. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now I want to get the number of rows and columns in the data set. So just type df.shape and then run this. Okay, so now I see that I have 195 rows of data or individuals in this data set and 24 columns or data points on each individual. All right, so let's create a new cell and let's get the, the target counts or the target, uh, let's get the number of people that have the disease and the number of people that don't have the disease. Okay, so of course our target is on the status column and that's what determines who has the disease and who doesn't. So who has Parkinson's disease and who don't have Parkinson's disease. All right, so here I'm just gonna put get the target count. So just type DF and then status and then dot value underscore counts. All right, so let's run this. And now I can see that there are 147 individuals in this data set that do have the disease and then 48 individuals that do not have the disease. So now I want to know, well, if I were to just guess that everybody has the disease in this data set, what's my my probability of getting it right, of getting of my guess being right? If I were to just guess that all of them have the disease and then also if I were to guess if all of them don't have the disease. Okay, so I'm going to create a print statement here, and I'm going to put, if I guess the individual did not have Parkinson's disease, comma, I would be correct some percentage of the time. So... Actually, I just put a comma here, and then I can do the math for the percentage. So actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and do the math. So let's bring this print statement down. Okay, and here we go. I'm just going to put has, I'm going to put actually percent, percent has disease is going to be equal to that number 147 divided by 147 plus 48. Okay, and then I'm gonna multiply that times 100. And then the percent that don't have it, so I'm gonna put percent uh, don't have disease, not very good uh, naming, but it'll do the job. So it will be 48 divided by 147 plus 48 times 100. Okay, so now here I'm checking the ones that did not have Parkinson's disease. So I'm gonna use this variable here. Okay, and I'm gonna put a percent sign here and then I'll put of, of the time. And that looks good. So I'm gonna basically just copy this, highlight it and copy it using control C. And then I'm gonna come down and use control V to paste it. And now I'm gonna change this to, if I guess the individual that have, or guess the individual has, Parkinson's disease, I would be correct. This will be percent has disease. So I'm going to highlight that and copy it using control C and paste that here using control V and let's run this. Okay, so if I guess the individual did not have Parkinson's disease, I would be correct 24.6153% of the time. Okay, and if I guessed only that the individual did have Parkinson's disease, I would be correct 75.38% of the time. 
So I want my model that I'm going to be creating to be much better than this, much better than me just guessing. All right. So, or at least better than it. Maybe not much better, but at least better. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now I want to visualize the count. So just type SNS dot count plot and I'm going to input the information from the status column. And let's go ahead and run this. OK, and now we can actually see visually that more people in this data set have the disease than people who don't have the disease. OK, which is indicated by the number one that they have it and zero that they do not have it. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And I want to look at the data types. So here I'm going to put get the data types. So just type df.dtypes and then run this cell. And this lets me know the data types of the, of the data set here. And what I can see immediately is that we have this object and the rest are all numbers. So when I'm creating my model, I need to do something with this, with this column. OK, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let's create the feature data set. So I'm going to create a variable called x, which will contain the feature data set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that name column because, well, I don't think a name is that important. And also, this way, I don't have to convert it to be a number. OK, so I'm going to just drop that column. And next, I want to I want to convert the, the feature data set to an array. And I also want to drop the status column. OK, so I'm going to set this equal to mp.array and type x dot drop and I'm going to drop the status column. Okay. So I think that looks good. Next I want to create the target data set. So I'm going to call it y and I'm going to set it equal to np dot array because I'm going to make it an array and it's going to contain only values from the target column which is status. All right, so that looks good. Let's run this. Great, I'm gonna create a new cell. And in this cell, I plan on splitting the data. So I'm gonna split the data to be 80, or here we go, put split the data into 80% training and 20% testing data sets. All right, so I'm gonna need to create some variables. So I'm gonna create x underscore train x underscore test y underscore train and y underscore test and set this equal to train underscore test underscore split and we need to input the feature data set and the target data set and then give it a test size so i'm gonna set the test size equal to 0 0.2 which is 20 percent and let's run this okay so it looks like i misspelled something here i put a k here let's run this one more time all right, that looks good. Next, let's create a new cell. And I want to transform the data, or more specifically, transform the feature data to be values between 0 and 1. So I'm going to create a variable called sc, which will be short for scale. And I'm going to use min max scalar. And I'm going to give minmax scalar a feature range. And that range will be from 0 to 1. All right. Next, I'm going to fit and transform the X train data set. And then I'm going to place that new transform data back into X train. So just set X train equal to sc.fit underscore transform 
and then input X train here. And now I'm going to take that that training and that transformation, and I'm gonna going to use this transformation on the X testing data set. All right, and then store it back in X test. So just set X test equal to SC dot transform. transform and input x underscore test all right so this should transform the data let's go ahead and run this all right that looks good let's create a new cell and now I want to create the xgb classifier okay so xg boost is what xgb stands for and it's an extreme gradient boosting um, model based off of the decision tree. So XGBoost is a new machine learning algorithm designed with speed and performance in mind. All right, so I'm gonna create a variable called model and I'm gonna set it equal to XGB classifier. And I'm going to train this model on x underscore train and on y. Uh, let me think about this. I'm going to do on the x, yes, x underscore train and y underscore train. So that's what we're going to train the model on, is that training data set. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and let's create a new cell. And now I want to get the model's predictions. So I'm going to create a variable called predictions and set it equal to model.predict. And it's going to try to predict the, the Y test data based off of the X underscore test data. Okay, so let's go ahead and show the predictions. So just type predictions here and run this cell. Okay, and now we can see the predictions. Of course, one again, meaning that that individual has the disease and zero meaning that that individual does not have the disease. All right, so also let's go ahead and show Y test. Okay, so you can see, you know, the model got this individual correct. Here the model got the individual incorrect and so on and so forth. All right, so let's kind of evaluate the model and see how well it did. So I want to get the models accuracy, the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. So in order to do that, just print classification underscore report, and we're gonna input Y underscore test and predictions. Okay, and now let's run this. And now I can see that this model is about 92% accurate. It has a a recall of about 70%, a precision of um, a precision of 100%, and the F1 score is 82%. So this actually looks really good. And you can obviously see that here we have the zero and one, which is the classification, and um, we have the the number of individuals here. So this model looks like it did fairly decent. Um, I like it. I would probably do a little bit more testing on it and you know double checking this but this looks really good and that's basically it. So I really hope that you all enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Please become a subscriber to my channel if you're not already and share the video. And I have many more videos on machine learning and Python and programming. So be sure to check all of those out. And as always, thank you for watching. And I will see you all in the next video.